good morning everybody today we are discussing about complications of local anesthesia complications of local anesthesia is divided into two types local and systemic local by needle breakage pain on injection soft tissue injury patient air paralysis superfluous anesthesia bedding on injection paresthesia dysmus hematoma infection fluffing and ulceration edema and intraoral lesion due to post anesthesia systemic complication by fainting allergic reactions toxicity nausea and vomiting and visual disorder so first we are discussing about the needle breakage it's a rare one that is a sudden unexpected movement of the patient this due to believe that smaller diameter needles like 30 gauge are more likely to break than the larger diameter like 25 gauge so if you are using 26 gauge the chance of needle breakage will be less compared to the 30 gauge needle then the needle breakage usually occurs at the hub which is why the needle should never be inserted completely into the soft tissue and avoid bending a needle may be considered for the injection technique the important to do because once we are inserting the needle from the opposite side for the inferior nerve block then changing to the position to the other side so what will happen the chance of bending of the needle and that will leads to needle breakage so how can we prevent the needle breakage do not insert a needle into the soft tissue to heat up always leave a portion exposed so if the needle is inserting to the soft tissue if the needle is going up to the hub that means you are doing a wrong technique or there will be you never get a bony contact so you never insert the needle the maximum up to the hub use always long needles if a depth of more than 18 mm is required for inferior alveolar nerve block <clears throat> because inferior nerve block we are using long needle because according to the anatomical variations and patient wise the soft tissue covering will be more so muscles and other soft tissue are there so the insertion of the needle we are using long needle huge larger diameter needles like 25 gauge to 27 gauge needle we are ideally used for inferior nerve block and maxillary nerve block do not apply any excessive force on the needle once it is inserted in the tissue means you are never exert too much pressure on the needle redirecting air needle is required withdraw completely then only you give the next uh, direction do not bend a needle more than once so suppose if the needle breakage happened what you will do first as the patient should stay calm instruct the patient do not to move and let his mouth open and if the fragment is visible remove it with a hemostat or a needle holder or magnet intubation forceps these are commonly used to remove uh, the needle breakage if the needle is not visible what to do don't probe it inform to the patient record the events in the patient chart <coughs> refer the patient to 
and foreign and maxillofacial surface. Next is pain on the injection site. Pain on the injection site is due to the dull needle, means the blunt, the needle tape, rapid injection, forcefully you inject the solution to the particular site using cold LA solution and wrong technique. So how can we prevent always counter check if the needle is blunt or not? And never inject the solution rapidly. Inject the solution slowly. For one cartridge, you will take minimum one to two minutes. Then check counter check the solution is cold or not and always use the correct technique. Next one is soft tissue injury. Soft tissue injury is happen when the patient may bite into the lower lip or tongue when there is loss of sensation that accompanies successful anesthesia, mostly seen on the if you're giving inferior nerve block or mental nerve block, the lip will be anesthetized and also tongue. So what will happen if traumatized will happen swelling and pain lateral results. It commonly seen the patient like children or mentally challenged patients. So how can we prevent? What is <clears throat> informed to the parent, guardian, caretaker to watch the patient carefully for the duration of soft tissue anesthesia. Then manage use analgesis if required. Drinks or application with the lukewarm salt or baking soda and apply petroleum jelly over the lip tissue. Next is facial nerve paralysis. It occurs when anesthesia is introduced into the deep loft of the parotid gland. So the needle is inserted into the parotid may occur if there is an over insertion during inferior neck block. Because if you are doing the wrong technique, the needle might be goes instead to the penetrates to the parotid gland capsule. So that will may cause a transient unilateral paralysis of the muscles of chin, lower lip, upper lip, cheek, and the eye. Usually occur seen like uh, akinosi techniques. So what will do? This will have a secondary is of local anesthetic injection is temporary and last expected duration of anesthesia of soft tissue for the anesthetic administration. Potential risk may result if the patient is unable to close the eyelid. So how can we prevent? First, proper care and handling of injection control and the cartridge. Follow the basic principles of electromagnetic injection technique. Avoid the over insertion of the needle. For the conventional inferior nerve block, do not inject unless bone has been contacted at the appropriate depth. <coughs> Means, if you are inserting needle on the middle side of the ramus of mandible, please counter check if the needle is inserted in uh, hits on the middle side of the bone. It is not hitting the bone, that means your technique is wrong. So do it the proper technique. So how can we manage? First we show the patient. If the patient is wearing condyle lens, should be removed. Advice patient use iPads until the motor function returns. Record the details in the patient chart. And always keep the cornea be lubricated. Superfluous anesthesia is the unwanted anesthesia of the other nerves may also occur. The patient will notice a transient loss of sensation on the affected side when swallowing. The auricular temporal nerves is most often assessed as a part of the Ovid's block. This is not really a complication, but the patient will notice loss of sensation, sensation over the superior half of the ear and the chamber. How can we prevent? Always aspirate as well and often is an unavoidable one.
main event reassure the patients of the transient nature of the foot pain. Next one is the burning on the injection. Burning on the injection that is due to rapid injection of LSO lesion. Sometimes if the LSO lesion is warm and cartridge solution is contaminated. So how to prevent burning injection? Forceful injection of LSO solution avoided. Counter check that uh, solution is warm or not and counter check the cartridge is contaminated and needle also contaminated or not. Always use the fresh cartridge and fresh needle. Next is paresthesia. Paresthesia that lasts anesthesia lasts longer than expected. It's hyperreactive patients weak months years or longer. Effect on the tongue, loss of taste, bite, bend, mostly for eight weeks. Causes by the trauma to the nerve, insertion of the needle inside a foramen, and also hemorrhage increase pressure and a paresthesia. Next one is trismus. Trismus means difficulty in the mouth opening. Prolonged spasm of the jaw that leads to opening recession. So, pain and difficulty often in the mouth opening most often seen on the posterior superior alveolar nerve block technique or inferior nerve block technique. So, it will cause us due to trauma to the blood vessels contaminated cartridges, multiple injections, or low-grade infection. So how can we prevent? Use sharp, sterile, disposable needles, a traumatic injection, and avoid repeating uh, these are the uh, prevention what we can do. And treatments for uh, management if Christmas will happen, use hot pads, warm saline drinks, analgesic and antibiotics, muscle relaxants, physiotherapy, use chewing gum. These are commonly used to recover from the Christmas. Next one, hematoma. Hematoma is localized complications due to the puncture on the vein or artery leads to swelling, discretion, bruise, trismus, pain and infection and apex pressure immediately and ice packs. It will last to 7 to 10 days. So, how can we prevent the hematoma? Mostly the hematoma seen on the terrible press of the veins, poses paralyna and vein free alveolar nerve vessels and metal nerve vessels. So, how can we prevent? First is the uh, thorough the normal anatomy. Use always short needle for the PSA. Minimize the number of penetration of needle. And we can uh, manage by first one is the first direct pressure apply on the particular point once if the bleeding is stopped first discharge the patient with instance like ice pack apply on this side for of our first six hours do not apply heat for the six hours might be the patient will take hot tea hot bath like they know about everything use analysis if required and there will be discretion on particular area will be there that will takes time to disintegrate so inform to the patient and if the patient having difficulty in mouth opening so treat the same what we are doing for the Christmas patient chewing gum physiotherapy hot pads everything Next one is infection. 
Infection is a rare complication. Mostly the normal flora of the oral cavity are not a concern because they do not lead to infection in patients who are not significantly immunocompromised. It due to the contamination of the needle or the injection through infected area to non-infected one. And also if there will be uh, patient hang such as abscess is there no do not insert the needle on that particular area because that infected area you will transfer to the non-infected one so infection will transfer to the other area and not only would low ph prevent to onset heli action and but the infection should be could be spread so what we'll do analgesic and antibiotic will prescribe for infection case so use Pre uh, sterile disposable needles don't contain the needle with the conducting non sterile surface outside the mouth in severely immunocompromised patient consider topical and antiseptic prior to the injection prescription of antibiotics like mentally appropriate dose and duration record the details in the patient chart and follow up to determine the progress next one is edema <coughs> Edema is due to causes by trauma, infection, allergy, hemorrhage, and injection of irritating solutions. So, how can we manage the edema minimal by analgesic of pain and results within days and apply uh, cold packs to reduce the edema? Post anesthesia or indoor lesions, usually severely days after injection, needle trauma and recurrent ulcers. Apply topical LA gel or uh, uh, taking analgesic for the pain. Next one is the systemic complication. Systemic complication, general complication occurrently result of the drug use or local problem that can lead to systemic sickle. First one we are discussing about It's a transient loss of consciousness causes due to reduce the blood supply to the brain and cerebral ischemia decrease in the blood pressure Mainly if the patient is dental treatment the patient position will be upright and the patient having vasovagus syncope will be common also a patient having fear from the dental treatment due to injection and there will be chance of hypotensive patient the syncope will be chance it's a common one seen in the dental treatment so the predisposing factors such as not two types psychogenic and non psychogenic psychogenic by fear during dental treatment non psychogenic by posture upright suddenly Diet like uh, decreased glucose, decreased cortical function, and hypotensive patient. What are the signs and symptoms we can see in single patient? First, dizziness, restless, pale and cold skin, sweat of forehead, shallow breathing, low BP, low pulse, dilated pupils. So, how will you manage a single patient before and after consciousness? Before the loss of consciousness, we will do the tandem position, supine position, raise the patient's legs to 10 to 15 degree elevated. So the blood flow goes to the brain can be maintained. After loss of consciousness, the same procedure will do tandem position. Loosen any tight, tight screws, clear airway and tongue should be forwarded and to uh, give spirit of ammonia for breath. So it's a pungent smell, so patient suddenly just can open their eyes. Position of the patient is supine with the thorax and the brain at the same level. It should be raised, you can see in this diagram, 10 to 15 degrees slightly elevated. So once consciousness is regained, 
input is needed as a sugary food or drinks to increase the glucose in the brain. So, might be the patient skip the meals like that, no? Before or after you give one class of glucose that is very good. Hot drink to warm the body and stop all the dental procedure to maintain uh, the patient's consci consciousness. Pre-medication to avoid the single ways, avoid all the non saigony factors like patient supine position, diet, means patient give glucose diet, and control systemic candle like a diabetes and patient BP also. For patient having stress, fear, everything is there in this psychogenic factors. So what we will do? Diazepam 5 mg one night before the surgery and one hour before the appointment. So we can reduce the fear factors. Next one is allergic reactions or hypersensitivity reactions. In allergy, it's the antigen antibody reactions, it's a rare complication. So it might be acted through exposure or to a particular allergen. Most commonly uh, uh, seen like vasodilation of capillaries, smooth elevation of itching spots in the carrier, angioretic edema, swelling around the lips, eye larynx might lead to respiratory obstruction. Hands pass into the bronchial difficulty in the breathing and can hear the whistling sound. So, what are the predisposing factors we can see in a representative mostly due to sodium metabisulfate? Uh, lactic allergy and topical anesthesia like uh, kind of preservative like some middle paramine like that so avoid this type of more uh, sodium bisulfate and sodium bisulfate middle paramine lactose everything we will avoid so the main thing we are noticed in a uh, hypersensitive reactions Skin reactions mostly like uh, delayed and uh, immediate reactions will be there. Respiratory bronchospasm, laryngeal uh, edema will be there. So, skin reactions was what we will do. Uh, Antihistamine drugs we will give and observe one hour and send for the medical consultation. Respiratory problem if the patient has difficulty in breathing, then what we will do is commonly uh, first be giving the basic life support, administer oxygen of uh, 5 to 6 liters per minute, and uh, bronchodilator and observe one hour, and also we will give the antihistamine drugs. Then delay hypersensitive rea reaction after one hour mostly we are seeing that uh, skin rashes next one is toxicity toxicity usually to the interventional rapid intravenous injection or excessive extravascular dose clinical signs is hypotension cardiovascular collapse seizure and allergic reaction how will happen the over dosage of filling because the most the common thing according to the patient wise the normal dosage will be very so the normal dosage dosage for a patient is 6 to 10 cartridges for a patient so the cause of toxicity is the high dosage of LA you administer on the patient or injection directly to the uh, IV or too rapid injection and also if the patient having kidney or liver disorder is there the chance of toxicity will be more so what are the protective measures we will do do not exceed their dosage 
Avoid IV injection by aspiration. You should inject near to the target area, not in the blood vessels. Do not inject on the blood vessels. That is very important. Inject slowly means one cartridge. You can inject one to two minutes. And also, if there be any liver or kidney disease patient, you must evaluate. Then only it will be dosage of life. Thank you.